sorry. That does actually look like me and my girlfriend. So that's quite... <laughs> uh, apparently, in Norfolk, the marriage guidance service is called Related. <laughs> my girlfriend says I'm not very romantic. The other day we were kissing on the sofa. She said, how about we take this into the bedroom? I said, OK, you get the other end. <laughs> When, uh, when she suggested we try playing doctors and nurses, I was really hoping for something sexier than being left in a corridor for two days. <laughs> My girlfriend and I are trying for a baby. Her mom's agreed to help out, just so I get hard. <laughs> She's going to see that on telly as well. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> They always say you'll find the love of your life when you're not really looking, which was true, but by then I'd run her over. <laughs> I've been trying to persuade my girlfriend to sexually stimulate me with her key ring, but she just keeps fobbing me off. So... <laughs> when I heard you could now be a sperm donor by post, I came in a jiffy. <laughs> I went to a swingers club, the doorman goes, it's £15 to get in, or you can pay £20, that includes a meal. I paid £20, I went in, this oiled naked guy comes up to me, goes, hello, my name's Emil. <laughs> <laughs> I once had a one-night stand and I didn't get an erection, that isn't cool. Luckily, the woman I was with was really understanding, she just said, don't worry, that used to happen to me. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Hey, that round of points for the game, the lady! Come on back. <laughs> now we play a round called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Nathan, which category would you like? Um, health, please. OK, your category is health, and the answer is eight. What is the question? Is it when talking to Barack Obama, how many black friends does David Cameron claim to have? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what might bras look like if breasts were arranged vertically? <laughs> 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 it, according to figures given to the tax office, how many coffees has Starbucks ever sold? <laughs> yeah. Is it um, after what hour are you legally permitted to consume square mint chocolates? <laughs> 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 Is it how many times has Julian Assange watched the complete DVD collection at the Ecuadorian embassy? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, in fact, how many Father's Day cards did Boris Johnson get? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many episodes of Top of the Pots from the 1970s are safe to repeat? <laughs> Is it how many thousand people are looking at this thinking, why is Lamar doing comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Including the bar. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Is it, in fact, how many days should this year's winner of The Voice reserve for their career? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's about the NHS. Is it, in fact, speaking, how so. many commandments are there now for patient care? Yes, you're absolutely right. Thank you very much, Andy Parsons. That is it. Yes, the question I was looking for was how many care commandments are being proposed for hospitals to help improve standards for patients? This is the news that the Care Quality Commission proposes that doctors and nurses should be issued with eight fundamentals of care to ensure that patients are treated well. The charter to be displayed in every ward and GP surgery across the country is one of a number of proposals to improve standards of health care. Now, obviously, tradition, there are ten commandments, but they felt unnecessary to include the one about the donkey. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> Is the one about the donkey? The, 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 the donkey? It's an oxen, isn't it? Welcome to Mock the Week, 458 BC. <laughs> <laughs> Thou shalt not cover thy neighbour's drip. <laughs> <laughs> Thou shalt have a right to wear a gown that doesn't show your bum. <laughs> Food that can be cut with a knife. Oh, they're so desperate for money. My nan was in hospital recently and they had to kick her off her trolley because they were taking it back to Asda for the pound. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard your nan's off her trolley anyway. <laughs> I can't offend any more family today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other news. What has uh, been compared this week to a bad pub quiz? Is it this? not the week? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs>
That is the <laughs> least of the things that's been said about it's this. The UK, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's the UK citizenship it test. It is the citizenship it? test, yes. Isn't uh, part of the problem, the questions are too trivial, they said, right? So I think they should just ask them, like, you know, like real British questions, like, for example, um, what scares you more, terrorism or snow? No, <laughs> welcome to the country. <laughs> <laughs> you can't the, the I'll, give I'll give you some I'll give you some sample of the okay. question, right? Just so you get the idea of what stuff is being asked. And the problem is, you, you, you cherry pick any of these, you can make it all seem ridiculous. But the uh, but their quiz is stuff like this. Um, which of the following statements is correct? The mousetrap is a play that's been running in London's West End since 1952, or it's an environmental policy aimed to prevent mice from destroying crops. <laughs> I like the way that you... It's like an ad for the mouse trap which you need, you know. Uh, other questions. Uh, which sport can be traced back to 15th century Scotland? Surfing, Formula One, golf <laughs> or motorbike racing? <laughs> These are the actual questions. Yeah, of, these are actual questions of the test. But this isn't like a bad pub quiz. This is like one of those quizzes at the end of the before the break on ITV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is very very difficult, though, isn't it? Because you've got to decide what to do with immigration. Everybody's got their different views on it. And the, the thing is that you have to make sure that people are going to fit in. And I had this I had this fantastic conversation with this bloke this week, who went, "What I should do, what I should do is I should just ask one question, right? I should say, should there be immigration?" And if they say no, you should let them in. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, they think if you're midway through the test, it would stop and go, OK, you've got Welsh citizenship. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to say... <laughs> it's difficult, though, isn't it? For English citizenship, you should simply go, Do you know, can you make this sound? I think all they need is, rather than a test, they should give them more that crib sheet they give to Indian call centre workers. You know, hello, this is Tony. No, it's not Tony. <laughs> it is. <laughs> What's the weather there like, Tony? It... Rainy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've been found out, we've been found out. Shut it down, shut it down. Move to Lahore, move to Lahore, open up again. <laughs> so, yeah. Which publication did Charles and Camilla feature in recently? Readers' Wives. <laughs> Very much not, no. <laughs> They're Who's in the Bino, uh, oh, which... Uh, so, that's two outmoded institutions for the price of one. <laughs> that's right, they've got a new strip called Lord Snooty and his homeopath. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you... that's in the Bino, yes, celebrating their 75th anniversary. Hang on, oh. hang on, hang on, what was that? Put that back up again. What the hell was that? You just popped up. No, not that one. Don't the one, the one you hid from us. Show us that yes. one again. We Show us that it. one again. <laughs> We've seen it. You've... Yeah, that! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What are you planning to run that one in? Some oh. of us come out of that really badly. I... Andy <laughs> appears to be a baby. And he's oh. tiny. And he's a baby. Oh, I think we be Minnie the Minx or something like that. <laughs> I am huge. I look like a giant. Like, you look like you look Sigourney like white... Weaver uh, or something. <laughs> Which one of us is holding the love beads? <laughs> 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 Because they ain't going anywhere near me. Right. <laughs> you look a bit like Wayne Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all the losers there. Great, that's, that's been done by the person who actually draws Dennis the Menace. Yes. Why are we losers? That's, surely that's a life win. Why would you look at me? I'm like a tree. Oh, no. I'm a tree with a, I'm a potato with a smaller potato hovering on top of that. Well, listen, potato. they've given me a chin that makes me look like a stealth bomber. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the point's going to Andy, Nathan and Mars. <laughs> now we've come to <laughs> scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here right. we go. The first subject is... Unlikely things to hear on radio. You're listening to Radio U-Tree, the cream of the 1970s, broadcasting live from Pentonville. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jazz FM. You're listening by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> this is the breakfast news. The Prime Minister had porridge, the Home Secretary had muesli. <laughs> <laughs> My piles are giving me so much bloody grit. No. You're listening to Smooth FM. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Somali shipping forecast. Don't go out there! <laughs> 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 
This is Magic FM. Pick a frequency, any frequency. <laughs> <laughs> F9, hit. A2, miss. C3, hit. <laughs> that was the battleshipping forecast. <laughs> You're listening to Radio 3. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> On Talk Radio today, we've been discussing what a tosser Nick Clegg is. And now on the line, we've got David from central London. <laughs> <laughs> that was God is Dead by Black Sabbath. You're listening to Vatican Radio. <laughs> and at number one this week, Jedward, proving that teenage girls cannot be trusted with money. Well, I'm in the eye in the sky with the uh, travel report. I've waited 20 years to file this particular report. If I look down, I can see red lorry, yellow lorry, <laughs> red lorry, yellow... <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch that dial! I'm defrosting a pie. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on Radio 1, Nick Grimshaw. He's not very good, but he's only 28, so he definitely didn't get up to anything in the 1970s. <laughs> Next, Ed Miliband lays out his policies in I'm sorry I haven't a clue. <laughs> <laughs> it's now 10pm on Radio 4. And before the news, here's five minutes of free porn. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear on a science documentary. My favourite element is helium. I can't speak highly enough of it. <laughs> the solar system is so vast that it could comfortably accommodate your mum. <laughs> the most fascinating thing is, if you really spend enough time looking at the alignment of the stars, your wife will leave you. <laughs> They call it dark matter. Well, whatever it is, I've tried to flush it four times and it's still <laughs> bloody there. The light from this new distant planet takes so long to get here that we're actually seeing things that happened years ago. And that's why scientists have named it Dave. <laughs> Tonight, we're discussing sports science. Is it a real job, or is it just P.E. when it's raining? <laughs> in our next experiment, we're going to prove that putting Dara O'Brien in a room full of young people still doesn't make science interesting. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got the points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we look through the telescope, we can see the biggest black hole ever found. Oh, no, I've left the lens cap on. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't d <-ream> shit? <laughs> Does your granny stair lift work? Well, it's all to do with nanotechnology. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nigel, that's not how you make a test tube, baby. Get your penis out of the test tube. <laughs> so, this is amazing, right? So, what you're saying is that somewhere, Professor Cox, in a parallel universe, there is a me with a hair. That's right, Dara. <laughs> the end of that round. Nobody gets any points at the end of that round. <laughs> Everyone come back. Chris, you and Gary get the points. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. Yes, Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Nathan Cason and Miles Jock.
Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Green. Good night. And Gary Delaney returns to Mock the Week as a guest next week alongside Holly Walsh and Josh Widdicombe. That's next Thursday at 10.